Spiritual Teaching 254 Love Each Other 1. I come to receive and to give to you, I come to listen to you and for you to listen to me. 2. Countless times I have manifested myself as father and teacher. Today it is my will to show myself as a judge, because I entrusted to you a year from which I come to ask you for the fruit. In eternity that period of time is only an instant, but the works done for you within it, they are recorded in a book where you are writing the history of your life. That spiritual book, written in the consciousness, it will keep the trace of your struggles to reach the goal, and it will be the one that you present before the Supreme Judge. 3. Today you only show me a page that represents an atom of time in which you took a step forward in the path of evolution. 4. As you climb, your works will reach greater perfection and you will conceive my work bigger and profound. For this I inspire you with confidence in my promises. I lift you up, I awaken you and heal you. 5. I want to receive your fruit because you have achieved it with an ideal of love, with effort and in order to please me. Through trials you have fought, on pebbles you have walked, the eyes of your body have wept and you have sobbed also in your spirit. 6. Shut your lip and the spirit does not complain at this moment and all the bitterness collected you turn it into hope in your father and in forgiveness for your brothers. I bless you for your obedience. 7. You feel that you wake up to a new day, that you are taking a step forward and that from there it enlightens even more your consciousness and you understand me better. You also measure with greater certainty your responsibility contracted before with me and to the world. 8. Today you know that time is a precious treasure that should not be wasted and that your gifts are like jewels that cannot remain hidden. 9. The time of darkness and ignorance has passed for you. Today, as apostles, you know what you say what you do and what you think and try to make merits to make you worthy of my blessings. You live in the middle of the light and if someone blind with it, it will be for lack of clarity in the eyes. 10. I pour out my grace on everyone in the same way, but each one receives it according to their preparation or spiritual elevation. 11. I am receiving the result of the work of embodied beings, because material life is measured by time. When you enter the spiritual life, you will see that. Eternity cannot be measured by hours, days or years, because time has no effect on the spiritual. 12. I am present invisibly before all of humanity because life beats in me, because I am a father, the only one who can perfectly judge your life and actions. I see her stirring in chaos, carrying the war in the heart and even in the spirit, carrying the murder and destruction weapon not only in the hands, but in the heart and unleashing the tongue like a true two-edged sword. Some attack, others defend. Some sow death while others cling to life. And like a shadow, the mantle of the new doctrines that advance from heart to heart and from spirit to spirit. Before that threat, men tremble and peoples, and they wonder, why does the Almighty not prevent the advance of these calamities? To which I answer, I allow them to germinate, grow, flourish, spread, and bear fruit, so that those trees are recognized by humanity for their own fruits. 13. The doctrines, theories, and ideas will spread in the world, so that men, after having eaten of all fruits, may they turn their eyes to the tree of life and understand that the true fruit, the one that has sweetness in its flavor and life in its substance, is the one that I offered you in my law of love from the beginning of time. 14. The peace of men is perishable, only the peace that I offer you is eternal. 15. I speak to you through human understanding and my word is the same seed of love that I have always sown in you. 16. I have given you strength, but not so that you impose my will through it on your brothers. I have freed your spirit, but not so that it can misuse that freedom. My weapons are the truth, love, charity, peace, forgiveness. 17. So that you can represent me with dignity and be my faithful witnesses, you must take advantage of my teachings and deepen yourselves in my word, so as not to fall into confusions that divide you, causing that while some defend and try to preserve the foreign cults and traditions, others arise fighting for the essence and spirituality of my doctrine. Remember that in the first precept of the law that I gave to humanity through Moses, I said, 
You shall not make an image or likeness of things from heaven to bow down to adore them. Since then, the way for man and the way has been clearly traced for the Spirit. 18. Moses failed to transmit the Decalogue to men. He also instituted secondary laws for human life and implanted traditions, rites, and symbols within the spiritual worship, all in accordance with the steps that of the human spirit. But the promised Messiah came and erased traditions, rites, symbols, and sacrifices, leaving only intact the law. So when the Pharisees told the people that Jesus was coming against the laws of Moses, I replied that I did not come against the law, rather I came to fulfill it, and that if my teachings were erasing the traditions, it was because the people, by complying with them, had forgotten to observe the law. 19. The case has been repeated in this time, people. In 1866 my presence through human understanding was revealed to Roque Rojas, who made it known to you, but he also created traditions, cults, and symbols to help you understand the sense of revelations. 20. Now that the moment is near when I stop speaking to you in this way, I want to erase from your heart all the materialism and fanaticism that may exist within your worship and practices, so that you can show off with dignity the name of disciples of the Holy Spirit. But understand that if I have come to erase superfluous traditions and customs, not that I am against my law, because as in the second era, to comply with the traditions, you can miss the true spiritual worship and your duties towards humanity. 21. If you are already free from all materialism in your worship of the Father, do not rise up in vain believing you have climbed the cusp of spirituality, from where you think you see small all those who profess sects or religions, because looking the speck in the eye of your brother, I will be able to discover the beam that you carry. 22. Humanity is tired of traditions, forms and rites. I want to show you the light of my doctrine as a haven for the spirit weary to seek the light. 23. People, let me be your judge, listen to my voice that speaks to you in your conscience. Do not look yet in me for the award or praise, do not come after the award, because if I anticipated these satisfactions, you would not know to possess them and you would become kings. Come humbly seek me as the least of my children. If you bring a remorse, bow down to me. I will know how to be your judge and I will speak to you with the utmost truth. I will correct you with charity. Then you will see beyond my words, the divine promise of something never foretold, of something superior to all desire. 24. I give you the gift of the word so that it awakens like the voice of the bells to those who sleep, so that it may carry essence, balm and life. 25. Do not wait for calamities to bring humanity back to me. Watch, pray and sow, and then light and peace of my spirit will advance from heart to heart. 26. My word, despite passing through the brain and lips of man, is light and love. Get ready crowds and let me manifest through my spokesman. And you who have been chosen for this high and delicate mission, prepare more. Whoever does not feel capable of transmitting my word with purity, let him prepare. If you can't do it, better stop and seal your lips. But bear in mind that your smallness, your clumsiness, or your humility are not an obstacle to my communication. I have been serving the clumsy and the rude to surprise the world. What I claim is impurity and sin. 27. I want you to make yourselves worthy that in the last years of my word, my revelations will follow one another and those that are heard under the vaults of the enclosures are not claims. 28. I have received the tribute of all creation from the major stars to the beings less perceptible to your eyes. Everything is subject to evolution, everything walks, everything advances, everything transforms, rises, and is perfected. When it has reached the summit of perfection, my spiritual smile, like an infinite dawn will be throughout the universe, of which all stain, misery, pain, and imperfection will have disappeared. 29. Here is my justice at the bottom of my word. 30. Multitudes. My word is the key with which I come to open your heart, that heart that has beaten so little for me. 31. Today you begin the second year of the last three that were entrusted to you for your preparation. 32. What have you achieved to this day? Nothing at all. After your examination in the light of your consciousness, 
you have understood that you have not taken a single step forward towards unification and towards spirituality. 33. You have become familiar with my claims and that is why you lie indolently, but do not trust too much, discard the belief that I am going to prolong the time of my manifestation among you, because if you live in that error, you will live deceiving and deceived. 34. Who will dare ask for a new opportunity, after the ones I have granted? Only the fool or the ignorant, but you are not ignorant, since I have spoken to you without ceasing year after year. 35. Why do I tell you this? Because I see the desire and intention hidden in the bottom of some hearts, intention and desire that even without having carried them out, they are already profaning the truth and purity of my work. 36. That desire that my word continue indefinitely, that everything continue as it has been up to now, is proof that the precious time that was entrusted to them, they have wasted it and now they would like some more time to be able to do something, more when the appointed time has come to an end, no one will be able to change a divine determination because to try, it would be equivalent to denying perfection to what God has arranged. 37. Do not go over my mandates, O people, because if someone does, he will be a witness of my justice and he will see it coming on this nation even the unleashed elements, making him understand his disobedience, since he did not know how to obey me despite my words of love. 38. What bitterness and what shame for those spirits, when they awaken from their mistake and realize their spiritual sickness, seeing that the Father still has to awaken them and touch them through the elements, as happened with the men of old. 39. I will raise from among these people all the impure seed and I will only leave the good seed, by which it can recognize me tomorrow by. How could men see the splendor of my truth through a confused people, disobedient or fanatic? 40. These days of preparation are of deep meditation for you people so that after this reflection and that examination before the consciousness, choose the path that you are going to follow, with the warning that whoever does my will may walk in peace, and whoever does his own, will have to decide to accept the tests that, when the time comes, inexorably they will have to surprise you. 41. In the one who obeys my commands there will be true peace, because he will be a man of good will to obey his father in which he does not know my orders, there will not be an instant of peace. He will incessantly listen to the claim of his conscience and he will live in constant shock. 42. I am not sentenced to anyone. I am specific to reveal to you in time what you can find as a natural result of your works. I tell you in time because I love you and so that you avoid it, so that you look straight at the truth and not deviate from the path. 43. The disobedient is always proud. But who is it that thinks he has the right to make his will or change my father's will? Who thinks they have received for true merit the gifts that it carries? Who believes that this people is indispensable to me for the fulfillment of my divine plans? 44. Do not let your mind be clouded. Do not silence the voice of consciousness. Do not let the temptations of matter make your spirit falter, because it would be very painful. 45. Watch and pray that you never lack strength. Meditate. Judge yourself severely and your conscience it will be ready to shed its light on your understanding and your hearts, so that peace may reign among you. 46. My lesson continues showing sheet after sheet the book of life to your spirit, because it will remain strong and prepared for when this teaching time is over. 47. If you really desire to rise like the prophets of the first era, and like them, to be beacons of light on the path of humanity, go towards spirituality, it will not be difficult to find it, since each of these teachings is a lesson of spirituality for men. 48. I want you to know that before those generations of spiritualized men begin to enter the world who I have announced to you, this message will be spread among nations and peoples, so that when they come to earth, Find the paths prepared by the people who heard the voice of their Lord and by those who joined this people because they believed his testimony. 49. I am incessantly inviting you to take new steps on this path that is one of eternal ascension. Do not stop and when you do it, let it be profitable because you have had to mature some purpose to affirm the faith or to meditate more than keep going. 50. How many in their hearts are saying to me, Master, why at this time did you not come to us as man, to be able to contemplate your presence, 
and I answer you with another question. Don't you realize that by wishing in that form my presence in the world, are you asking for my blood again? Keep me like this, in spirit, invisible only to your material eyes, but perceptible to all the senses of your spirit. At that time I spilled my blood to seal with her the love that in my doctrine I preached. Now I am pouring divine essence over everyone. As a proof of my love for men, despite their ingratitude, is the same, and that is why I approach them, to teach them the luminous path that leads you to dwell with me in my kingdom for eternity. 51. Others, spiritually tell me, if at least this word that you have made us hear with so much love, you would not put it away from us. To these I say, if you truly take advantage of my teachings and try to understand my purposes, it will not be painful for them to renounce this communication when the time comes to terminate it. And it will not be painful because your spirit will be impregnated with my essence and saturated with my light. But if some or many of my teachings you would not have been able to retain in your memory, that is why I have ordered the formation of the book that contains my word of this time. In that book that is made of my divine lessons, you will find the true arc that early spiritualists failed to understand and that is why they had to represent it with objects or symbols. 52. The true arc is in my word, because whoever opens it and penetrates with respect, spirituality and love, will find wisdom and deep down, profound revelation, prophecy, and all the gifts of the Spirit. At that dawn you will appear when my word is no longer heard through the imperfect human spokesman, and you will be witnesses of how in the middle of your meditations, in the moments in which you study or in the moments of your prayer, you will feel reach the most subtle of your being, a superior light, clarifying everything, a paternal influence enveloping you and a voice that is not human, speaking to you in a pure and perfect way. It will be the light of my inspiration reaching you in a true spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. 53. Blessed are you, who have managed to remove from your practices many of the superficial ceremonies and useless ones that the first bequeathed to you, keeping only the essentials, but recognize that you still have something to debug and a lot to spiritualize in you. 54. How happy will your spirit be if from this earth it manages to offer me the worship that I expect from it? But having left to the spiritual valley, leaving among its examples something that was not worthy of my work, the new generations, analyzing the inheritance that you bequeath to them, they will know how to set aside whatever impure you have left, thus taking the step that you have not been able to take. 55. I tell you, the more you purify your practices and perfect your worship, the less those will have to suffer, them come after you, and your merits before me will be greater, because you did not work for yourself, but you did thinking of your brothers, feeling in your heart, charity towards them. 56. Have you already seen how much you have had to struggle to purify what you received from your brothers who came before you? Well, do not give that painful work to those who come after your footsteps. 57. In the second era, my teaching reached its culmination when my departure was very close. 58. The disciples, knowing that they were the last moments that they would be with the Master, paid all their attention to listen and keep in the heart until the last of those words. 59. The divine desire of Christ was that his disciples would become the sours of his redemptive doctrine. So, in the supreme instant of his last lecture to the disciples, which was also the last conversation between the Father and the children, he said to them with a sweet accent, I am going to leave you a new commandment, love one another, lighting with the light of that maxim the greatest hope of humanity. 60. Also at this time, when I am about to conclude my communication between you, I contemplate the recollection and attention with which you listen to my lessons, they will be indelibly marked in the consciousness of my new disciples. 61. Just as at that time I told my apostles that they were going to stay in the world like sheep among wolves, so that you would always live alert, now I tell you to prepare yourselves, watch and pray, because many will rise up against you, using treacherous weapons and using all means to confuse you. 62. Time is one of struggle, you all know it so that no one is surprised. 63. I have simplified my lessons to the maximum so that you understand them and can analyze them in search of their essence and when the moment comes, you have an easy answer for each question that they ask you. You won't need to talk much to convince. If you are truly prepared, your word, besides being simple, will be brief. 
You will not need to know science to answer the scientist or know theology to answer the theologian. A word of light illuminates everything and I want words of light to come from your lips. 64. Not all who have heard me at this time will rise up to testify of my word. Those who in truth will love me, those who love me in their own likeness and go in search of the needy in whom their charity and its consolation. 65. Those who understand my teaching and feel it deeply will embrace it with faith. They will be the ones who have to face all adversity, those who have to wield the weapons of truth, love and justice, through troubles and in a world from which that justice and that truth have long since departed, these sours will go, full of peace and trust in their God spreading the spiritual message of the third era throughout the world. My peace be with you.